Hello, son, Mimos. How are you? I hope you all are fine. And we are starting today the part two of the chapter, Tell the Cell, the Structural and Functional Unit of Life. Before starting the chapter, I want to wish everyone a very, very happy and prosperous new year. May this new year bring a lot of happiness to your life and also a lot of success in your career. So, in the part one of the chapter, Cells, the Structural and Functional Unit of Life, we have studied about the constituents of cell, that is the cell membrane or plasma membrane. We have studied about the nucleus and also we have studied how the cell, concept of cell, developed from time to time. What were the views of the scientist regarding cell and how cell is observed under a microscope because we cannot observe a cell by our naked eye because cell is a very small or minute structure. So we need to observe cell only. We need to observe cell only through our through a microscope. And we also discussed about the cytoplasm structure of a cell and also the function how the cell is the structural and how it is a functional unit of the life and also we have discussed about different shapes and size of cell so today we are going to discuss about the organelles the finer particles of cell see cell is also constituted of different organelles Okay, it has also different functional parts that help in various functions. So why these organelles? These organelles are there for proper functioning of the cell. Okay, and we can see these organelles by highly developed microscopes. With normal compound microscope, it may be difficult to see these cell organelles, but by highly magnified microscopes with high magnification, or we can say the electron microscope, we can able to see the cells or cell organelles. Okay. So basically the electron microscope by the help of electron microscope, finer functional parts of the cell can be easily visible. Okay. But it cannot be seen by normal ordinary compound microscope. No, ordinary compound microscope we can see the organelles of the cell. So organelles. Organelles means small, finer, functional parts of the cells. Okay. They are the organelles. So first organelle. See, functions of the organelle. For organelles are sub, uh, also, also are the parts, parts of the cell that synthesize or produce. Synthesize means produce. Production. I think this color is not good. Red is only good. Produce substances like hormones, enzymes. Enzymes are required for a digestion. Next chapter. After the cell, we will study about different mechanisms of human body. And we will study about three mechanisms of human body. First one is your digestion, respiration, and then is your ex sorry circulation. So these three mechanisms we are going to study in the next chapter. So these all things are done by the cell organelles present inside the cell. So first cell organelle is your endoplasmic reticulum. If you see your uh, diagram here, endoplasmic reticulum is not given. So here if I draw endoplasmic reticulum looks somehow like this. It's an irregular network structure. Okay. Tubular structure distributed in entire cytoplasm. So you can see like this. This is also called as the skeleton of this cell. It, if you look the endoplasmic reticulum, it will look like the skeleton. So it is also called the skeleton, skeletal framework of this cell, but it is not made up of bones. But as it is looking like a skeleton, you can say it as a 
skeletal framework of this cell. So this is the endoplasmic reticulum. In short, we call it as ER. In short, we call it at ER and it provides the supportive framework. Bones in our body provide supportive framework to our muscles. Okay, our as our bones are present, it provides supportive framework to our muscles, to our internal organs. So, in cell, endoplasmic reticulum provides a supportive framework to the cell. As in our body, bones provide supportive framework to our muscles and internal organs. In cell, endoplasmic reticulum provides supportive framework and helps in distribution of one part to another. Okay? One part of cell to another. So, and it also separates a cell, you can say. It distributes the cell into one part to another part. Okay? Now, ribosomes. Ribosomes are the granules, small, small granules that are scattered freely in the cytoplasm or attached to the endoplasmic reticulum. See, your endoplasmic reticulum may have small, small granules on them. If I draw those granules, see, these small, small granules. And also these granules are scattered throughout the cytoplasm. So these are known as your ribosomes. These are known as ribosomes. And on the basis of presence of ribosomes, endoplasmic reticulum is divided into two categories. The one with ribosomes is known as rough endoplasmic reticulum, RER. And the one without ribosome, because it is not compulsory that every part of endoplasmic reticulum will have ribosome. Some part may not have ribosome. So the part in which ribosomes are absent is called SER. SER means smooth endoplasmic reticulum. And the function of this ribosome is to synthesize protein. So basically, ribosome synthesize protein. Now, if you will ask, what is the function of endoplasmic reticulum? So endoplasmic reticulum has two functions. In case of RER, if wholly we consider endoplasmic reticulum, it is a supportive framework to the cell. But if we individually discuss about RER and SER, RER helps in protein synthesis. But SER helps in your steroids synthesis steroid or hormone you can say steroid or hormone is produced basically by SER or smooth endoplasmic reticulum okay so ribosomes their function is they synthesize protein mitochondria they are the minute bodies scattered in the cytoplasm Mitochondria are the minute bodies. See here. These black black bodies, they are known as mitochondria. If we enlarge this mitochondria, it will look somehow like this. Okay. Double, double membrane structure. And here we will be having like that. Cristae. This is the mitochondria, enlarged version of mitochondria. They are helping in releasing energy, release of energy from food. So they are the powerhouses of the cell. Why they are the powerhouses of the cell? Because they help in release of energy from the food. Okay. Help in release of energy from the food. That's why they are known as powerhouses of the cell. And how this energy is released? You will say energy is released from a joule? No. In our body, energy is released in form of ATP. See, we have a currency in our notes. In our India, in our country, we have a currency. What is our currency? Rupees. 
So for energy also, we have a currency. That is your ATP. Energy currency, ATP. ATP means adenosine triphosphate. And in our body, energy is available in the form of ATP. In India, you will not find dollars. You will find rupees because it is a currency of India. So in our body also, you will find ATPs. That is adenosine triphosphate. And next is your Golgi bodies. Golgi bodies are small stacks of thin membrane. Okay, before going to Golgi bodies, I want to share you something. That is cellular respiration. Cells are living organs, living ones, living living parts of the body. So they will respire. Cellular respiration takes place by the help of mitochondria. The cells respire by the process of by, by the help of mitochondria or singular it is mitochondrion. Golgi bodies. Golgi bodies are the small stacks of thin membrane. They produce various secretions. So secretions See, basically, Golgi body is helps in packaging. Okay, packaging means final product. Which suppose endoplasmic which produce karta hai. Usko final product mein convert kon karta hai? Golgi bodies. So, they helps in production of hormones, enzymes. Okay, Golgi bodies here, it will look like that somehow. See, picture is not given. Where this is going? Yes, here. It will somehow look like your Okay, like that. Somehow look like your uh, endoplasmic, but not endoplasmic. It is a different one. Lysosome. Cellular digestion takes place at lysosomes. Cellular digestion. Cellular. Cellular respiration takes place at Your uh, mitochondria cellular digestion takes place at lysosomes. Why? Because they contain enzymes that helps in digestion and also they engulf foreign bodies. Engulf means they catch up or they protect the cell from foreign bodies like germs. Okay. And also digest and dissolve the injured part of the cell. Suppose here is a cell and here is the lysosome. Okay, this is a lysosome. And here is one germ and here it is an injured part. This part is injured part. So what the lysosome does, it will, by the help of its enzymes, it will uh, engulf or, or it will di digest this and germs and injured part of the cell to protect the cell from further injury or from getting harmed by the germ. This is the function of lysosome. So they are the enzyme containing bodies capable of digestion various materials. Digesting various materials. What are the materials? Germs, injured part or old parts of the cell. So they help in cellular digestion and protection by protection from the germs or foreign bodies. Foreign bodies means germs. Okay. Or pathogens also we can say. Centrosome. See, centrosome is a part found only in plant cell. Sorry, animal cell. Found only in animal cell. They are absent in plant cell and they are located near the nucleus. And they help in cell division. They help in cell division. Yes. So cell division. Cell will divide. After some time, one cell will become two. Two cell will become four. Four will become eight. So this cell division takes place by the help of centrosome present only in animal cell. Now, plastid is present in plant cell. What are these plastid? You must have seen leaves are green in color. Why they are green? Due to present of pigment. 
due to presence of pigment. Which pigment? Chlorophyll. And you also must have heard that chlorophyll helps in photosynthesis. And where this chlorophyll is present? Present in the chloroplast. And this chloroplast is a plastid. Okay. Basically, we have three types of plastid. Okay. What are they? Chloroplast. Change this one. This is not visible at all. Okay. Green plastids. Chloroplast. Chloroplast. They have the tendency to trap the solar energy for photosynthesis. See, for photosynthesis, we need sun or solar energy. So, this chloroplast help in trapping the solar energy for photosynthesis. Photosynthesis means the process by which plants produce their own food. Now, is amyloplast. See, when the word amylo will come, amylo. It means other color, other than green. If the plant, suppose your carrot, carrot has orange color, so it contains amyloplast. Okay, other color than green, amyloplast. Leucoplast means colorless. And this leucoplast store starch and proteins. They store starch and proteins. Leucoplast. Okay. Vacuoles. Next is your vacuoles. See. Here you have a better diagram of animal cell. You can see here. You have the plasma membrane, lysosome, cytoplasm, ribosome, centrosome. Here is a Golgi body. You can see here is the Golgi body, nucleolus. Okay. Nucleus, brain of the cell and endoplasmic reticulum. And you see some of the parts of the endoplasmic reticulum have ribosome and some part do not have ribosome. The part with the ribosome is called RER. RER means rough endoplasmic reticulum. And the part without the ribosome is called as SCR. Smooth. R means rough. S means smooth. Okay. Plant cell, you see, in the plant cell, you will see long, one long or large white part. This is vacuole. It contains cell sap or water. So what is this vacuole? Cavities in cytoplasm filled with water and various substances in the solution. And in animal cell, vacuoles are lesser in number and smaller in size, basically absent. In animal cell, you will find very small vacuum or very small, very lesser amount of vacuum. But in plant cell, you will find quite large vacuum and contain more in number and they contain the cell sap. Cell sap means the liquid part of the cell, liquid material of the cell. Maybe water, maybe some other thing. Now cell division. Cell division means, see, we have completed cell organelles. Any doubt, you can comment me or go to our website in the doubt section. Cell division. Why we need cell division? Every cell has a life. Every cell. After that, they need to be replaced by new cells. And for growth also, suppose your hand is growing, bone is growing. So, if your bone is growing, see, cell is the structural part of the uh, structural unit of the every part of the body has a structural unit called cell. So, for the growth of that part of the body, we need the growth of the cell, growth of the number of cells also. So, we need cell division for growth. First point. Replacement. Some cells are getting older. So, we need to replace that by new cells. Because every cell has a specific lifespan. So between that lifespan or within that lifespan, we have to replace that cell with new cell. So we need cell division for replacement repair. Suppose your skin is getting torn off or getting hurt by some injuries. 
So we need to get repaired bad news cells. So for repair, we need cell, cell division. So basically by these three, basically by this, uh, for these three reasons, we need cell division. Okay. And these three needs of the body, growth, replacement, and repair is done by equational cell division or mitosis. What is equational cell division? Suppose you have one cell, it has 43, 46 chromosomes. Because in human race, we have to maintain these 46 chromosomes. See, her ek human ka a common number of chromosomes huna chahiye. A common number of chromosomes. Suppose a human ka 46, dusre ka 47 hoga to dikkat ho jayega. The race will not be maintained. So, yeah, in case of your other syndromes, it is different. I'm not talking about that. But basically, every human has the chromosome number of 46. So, to maintain the chromosome number of 46 in each and every cell of our body, we need equational cell division. Equational means, suppose this is one cell. It will get divided into two cells. And these two cells will have the same number of chromosome, 46 and 46. 23, 23, 23, 23, 23, 12.5, sorry, 11.5. It will, it will cause a problem to our body because every cell of our body need to be, need to have same number of chromosomes. So for duplication or for your growth, replacement and repair, we need to have same number of chromosomes, but for reproduction, see, Reproduction in that reproduction means if if a baby is there, one child suppose, is born by the help of one father and one mother. And we need to maintain 46 number of chromosomes. Yes, we need to maintain 46 number of chromosomes in a, in, in a human. So for that, what happened? For reproduction, we need gametes. For reproduction, we need gametes. What are the gametes? Gametes means the, uh, what I will say, gametes means the structures that are produced by the reproductive organs that help in your further growth of the human race or that help in reproduction. What are the reproductive organs? In male, see in male, F means female, M means male, okay. Female, we have ovaries. And male, we have testes. In detail, we will read in class 7. But now, ovaries and testes. Okay. And from the male, they produce their gamete called sperms. And female produce the ovum. And this sperm and this ovum has 23 number of chromosomes. Why 23? I will explain in after some time. Why 23? 23 in your ovum, 23 in your sperm. This is your ovum or egg. This is your sperm. The male gamete. Sperm. And What happened to produce a baby or to produce a human? This sperm and ovum needs to be fused. So this fusion of sperm and ovum is called fertilization. They will be fused. This is the ovum and the sperm will be fused with this ovum. Okay. And by this fusion, they will produce a zygote. This is your zygote, Z. Okay, by the fusion of sperm and ovum. And this fusion is known as your fertilization.
फ्यूजन ऑफ स्पर्म एंड ओवम इज कॉल्ड फर्टिलाइजेशन एंड दिस जायगोट इज प्रोड्यूस्ड एंड दिस जायगोट विल हैव हाउ मेनी क्रोमोसोम 46 हाउ 46 20 One second. Twenty three came from ovum. Twenty three came from for sperm. So if we add twenty three, twenty three will be forty six. And see, I have told you every organism in this world starts it its life from being from unicell, from being unicelled or be from one cell. Every organisms in this world starts its life from a single cell. And see. A human also starts its life from a single cell, and by that single cell, cell division takes place in our body, and we became a normal human. Now there are many processes in between how fertilization occurs, how sperm and ovum meets. That one we will read in detail in next classes. Means in future, you in seventh, eighth, ninth, you will study about them in detail. Okay, so name the scientist who invented the first microscope. See, before going to that, I want to tell that we have completed this chapter. Any doubt, you can ask in the doubt engine, or you can also ask in the comments. So the first microscope was developed by Antony von Leeuwenhoek. and the compound microscope was developed by robert hooke so the first microscope was developed by antony von leeuwenhoek who coined the term cell the cell term was coined by robert hooke cell term was coined by robert hooke and he named it by thinking of the cells of the monks or the rooms of the monks as they were arranged in the form of cells arranged in the cork okay single celled irregularly shaped organisms amoeba oval unicellular aquatic organisms see oval unicellular aquatic organism is climatomonas oblong single celled oblong what is oblong we have seen here oblong okay oblong oblong means paramecium shaped see here oblong means paramecium shaped and this is paramecium oblong word will come means leper shaped okay or paramecium so with this we have completed the chapter let's meet in the next chapter till then thank you bye bye and take care